Hi all, welcome to this tutorial to create some prime numbers in JavaScript. And we'll be doing that using some HTML5 web workers. Now all a web worker is, is a JavaScript running in the background without affecting the performance of the page. So basically it's a background thread. So this will teach us how to use multi-threading in JavaScript. Pretty cool, hey? So open up our template. So first of all, we'll need to get the user input. So we can use an HTML form to achieve that. So just before our script tags, put a form tag. We'll need to give it a name so that we can reference it in code. So just call it something like primes form. We also need an action. So that's what's run when the uh, submit button is pressed. So action will equal, we'll run a JavaScript function. So JavaScript colon with the function name. So find primes, for example, semicolon. Uh, inside our form, we'll need two inputs, one for the user input and one for the submit button. So first of all, let's ask a question. How many prime numbers to find? And the type of input, so input type will equal a number. That's an inbuilt type, which basically uh, represents an integer. And we'll need a name for that as well. So name will equal, say, num primes. For the submit button, so that'll be another input. Input type will equal submit. We'll probably want to change the default text, so we can do that via value. Value will equal, say, go. And finally, we'll need somewhere to output our result. So how about we create a paragraph with an ID, and the ID will be something like output. And that should do us for our form. So let's just give that a go. So open up a web browser, run it. Yep, there's our form. How many prime, I'll just make that a bit bigger. How many prime numbers to find? And we can select a number here, negatives or positive, or you can type in a number. So if I typed in, for example, 3434.45 and hit go, yeah, there's inbuilt validation saying it must be the nearest value, so the nearest integer. And if I do try to run it, it, there's a reference error because find primes function does not exist. So let's fix that up now. So inside our script tags, let's create the function. So function find primes. First of all, we'd like to grab the user input. So let's create a variable called num primes. And that will equal, well, all form data is stored in the document. So we can go document.forms as an array. So we'll need to use the name of the form as the array element, just there. The second part, so the second square brackets will put the input that we want, which is num primes. So this is just a simple 2D array. And we need the value, so dot value of all of that. Now, the only thing is that value is a string and we want this to be an integer. So we'll have to use the inbuilt function pass int around all of that. Now to test that this is all working, how about we output something? So we'll use this paragraph where the ID is output. So we can handle that by going document.getElementById and then pass output in there. And we can set its inner HTML to equal our num primes. Just to make sure that it's an integer, let's add something to it. So num primes plus three. Let's give that a go. Okay, so input a number, say 12, go. The output is 15, 12 plus three. Awesome, if we put one in there, one plus three is four. It's working, good. Just say we didn't pass int, just to prove a point. Uh, we get rid of that. Let's see what happens there. So we've got one in there. Let, oh, let's reset this first. We've got one in there, let's go. See, it's got one, three. It's put one plus three as a string. If we put 12, it should be 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Yep, yeah, so it's not working. It's definitely a string, isn't it? So undo all of that. We don't need this for the time being, so just put that down the bottom. Next step is to create the worker. So create a variable called, say, primes worker. So this will be the process that runs in the background. So primes worker equals new worker. Now inside the constructor here, we need the URL or essentially the file name. So I've gone ahead and created a blank file called primesworker.js. So go ahead and create a blank file now. Here it is here. It's just an empty file. And 
in order to get that worker actually doing something, in order to get it to start working as such, we need to go primes worker dot post message. Now that can be anything, but we're going to pass the number of primes because that's the only thing that we know at this stage, isn't it? So num primes. Next we'll need to handle when messages come from the worker to the main thread. So we can do that by going primes worker dot on message. So that's essentially an event listener. So we'll run a function here. So on message will equal function. Now that function will pass an event. And what do we want to output here? Well, we just want to output whatever it sends us. So we can copy this line here and paste that in here. But instead of uh, equaling the number of primes plus three, we want it to equal the event dot data. So whatever data the worker sends us, we're going to output to the paragraph. Now because we potentially will have thousands of prime numbers coming at us, we'll probably want to scroll the screen with us. So we can do that by going window.scroll2. Now it takes an x, y coordinate, so 0, comma, we just need the bottom of the document. So document.body.scroll height, I believe, scroll height. That will probably do us for our HTML file. So remembering that we're posting a message to our worker and we're passing the number of primes. So head into our other file. In order to receive an event in a similar way that we've done already, we just go on message will equal a function. And that function will have an event as a parameter. We can grab the number of primes. So var num primes will just equal that event dot data. How about just to test this to make sure everything's working, we'll loop over a number of times equal to the number of primes. So for let i equal zero, i is less than the number of primes, i plus plus. Let's set up a text variable. So var text will just equal an empty string. Now in order to post data back to our main function, to our main thread I should say, well, first of all, let's create some text. So text will equal test plus i, say. And to post that back, we just can go post message, this dot post message. Uh, the message will be text. And hopefully our main function will detect that. Let's give that a go. Test 11. Okay, we're only showing the last output. I see, we just need to concatenate those strings together. So we want to add all of our data to the same text file. Uh, because we're doing that, we'll probably have to add a space after that, plus a space. Let's just make sure that's working. Yep, that's looking good. Now what if we put 12,000 here? To make sure that the scrolling is working, let's give that a go. Great. So it's posting the message as it's working it out in real time and the screen is scrolling to the bottom. That's exactly what we've set up. Can you see though that because we're posting a message each iteration, it's quite slow. Probably the actual calculation doesn't take that long. So we can go into there and fix that up. So we can just put a condition around this post message. So we can go if uh, i mod 100 equals zero, so that means every 100th iteration will post a message instead of posting a message every iteration. This is probably quite expensive to do this. Let's try it out anyway. So 12,000 again. Yeah, that's much faster. Can you see that we are almost finished? Oh, we are finished. It didn't take very long at all. So it's posting 100 pieces of information at a time. Great. Just to make sure that we've outputted all the text and to show that we're finished, we can just go text plus equals, let's put a couple of breaks, BRs, and just write something like finished because calculating primes can become expensive. So we'll put a finished there and we'll output the message one more time to make sure that we've got everything in the final output. Let's give that a go. Go. There we go, so it's gone up to 11,999 and its output finished. Perfect.
Now let's implement our prime functionality, so finding the prime numbers. Because we don't really know how many times we need to loop in order to find the number of primes, we'll have to use a do while loop. So that means we'll have to keep track of how many prime numbers we found. So var count will equal zero. And we'll also need to keep track of the actual number we're testing for. So x will equal zero. So let's set up a do while loop. So do all of that while the count so while the count is less than our number of primes, we'll iterate over this. So first thing we'll need to do is test whether x is prime. So if is prime, we'll create this function soon. If is prime x, then we want to increment our count. That means we found a prime number. And we want to add to our text string. So text plus equals x plus a space. We'll keep doing this condition here, and we'll have to increment our x value. So that means basically we'll keep, we'll start x at zero, we'll keep incrementing it and looping over this until we find a number of primes that has been requested. So let's implement the isPrime function. So function is prime takes a value, an integer. Now the first step is zero or one. Zero or one, or negative numbers, primes must be positive integers, or negative numbers are not prime numbers. So we could say if x is less than 2, return false. Now by definition, 2 is a prime number. 2 is a prime number because it's only divisible by itself or 1, only evenly divisible by itself or 1. So if x equals 2, return true. Now we have to check for each divisor. Just a note, mathematically speaking, there's no need to check divisors greater than the square root of the value. So greater than the square root of x. So first of all, let's calculate the square root. So square root will equal math dot square root of x. And we'll have to loop over each possible divisor, so we'll use a for loop. So for let the divisor, so div, equal 2. Any number that's divis uh, divisible by 2 is not a prime number except 2. So let div equal 2. Div is less than or equal to the square root. We don't need to go above that. Div plus plus. So if the x value is evenly divisible, so if x mod the divisor equals 0, that means it's evenly divisible, there is no remainder, then we'll return false. It is not a prime number. So if it gets through all of that, it is a prime number. So otherwise is prime return true. Let's give that a go. Hopefully it should work. Just change the number of primes to say 10. Go. Oh, we've got an error. Reference error. I is not defined. Line 14. Line 14. Oh yes, we don't have I anymore. That was from the previous code. We'll change that to X. So if X is uh, evenly divisible by 100, we'll post the message. Let's give it a go now. Great. So 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. They sound like prime numbers. Let's go up to 100. We'll go up to, say, 500. Good. It's working that out well. And finally, 10,000. Go. Yep, it's working out all the prime numbers between... Well, it's working out the first 10,000 prime numbers. Good. 104729. I think that's correct. And that's the end of our tutorial today. So we worked out how to calculate all the prime numbers using JavaScript using a web worker, a secondary thread, a background thread. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial and you've learned something new. Until next time, talk to you then. Bye.